Good morning. I curled 10 games of curling last week. I watched the briar. Besides myself, how many of you were yelling at the TV? Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> if I make it through this mass with a voice, please pray for me. It is the second Sunday of Lent, our entrance antiphon. Of you, my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. We gather as God's holy people then, so let us gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. As we come together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. For God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall be your descendants. And he believed the Lord. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then the Lord said to Abraham, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But Abraham said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? The Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abraham brought the Lord all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me. And answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. 
Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The Lord is my life and my salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm, my beloved, in the Lord is, in the Lord is this way. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to Jesus. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his exodus, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory, and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my Son, the Chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and the disciples kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Years ago, when I first moved up to Banff and was working there, I was the typical good Catholic. I sat in the back row of the church. And I'd been there for about three months, and the one Saturday night, this old gentleman who always sat in the back corner and took up the collection, comes walking up, whacks me in the shoulder and says, here, you do this side. And so that's starting my days of ushering in Bam. And after that, he and I would sit in the back row and he'd ask questions like, got a girlfriend? And you sort of go, well, kind of, yes, sort of. It's like, how much information do you want to give this whole time? 
Well, over time, as you get to know the person, and they get to know you, they love to share great wisdom with you. So we're sitting there one day before Mass, and people are coming in, and he hits me in the shoulder, and I don't think he ever asked me a question without hitting me in the shoulder first. I think it was hoping to wake me up or something. And he goes, so you got a girlfriend? And I kind of looked at him no, I'm being serious. And I said, yeah. Well, this time is when the Banff Film Festival was on. And the town was full of all kinds of movie stars and TV personalities. And a couple of them had just walked into the church. And he see them? Don't trust what you see. And then he turns to me and he says, before you marry the girl, take her backcountry hiking for a week so you know what you're going to marry. <laughs> now you're probably wondering what this has to do with transfiguration. Well, the reality is most of us have a facade. We have a way of presenting ourselves to the public or to the rest of the world that is not necessarily who we are. There is that real person, the person that God created, the person that God looks down upon and sees as beautiful, as wondrous, as precious in his sight. But oftentimes, we have a facade in front of us that protects us, we think, defends us, we think, or presents to the world an image that we want the world to believe in. All those years I spent in Bam, and every year we had that film festival, and then we'd have the winter festival, and you'd have more personalities show up then. The most amazing thing about it is most of them present different than who they are. You would see them coming into the hotel early in the day looking like any other sloth. They just come from hiking. They're covered in sweat. They're not really dressed up. And then you'd see them in the evening coming out of the, the elevator heading off for one of the banquets. All dressed up. The question is which one of them is real? Which is the real person? And who is the facade? You and I need to reflect on that. Our Lenten journey is about getting rid of that mascara, that facade that we present to the world and allow the world to really see us who we are. And that's what St. Paul is reminding us today, that we are God's children created in the likeness and in the image of God. We are beautiful. We are wondrous. We also are flawed. My mother used to say that every time she saw a wrinkle, she'd go and eat something so she would fill it up. <laughs> it's not exactly the way to get rid of our flaws. It's true, Jerry. She still lives by that today. You know? But the reality is, we have our flaws, what are we doing to get rid of them? What are we doing to get rid of our sinfulness? So that we shine forth. At the moment of conception, God puts a spark of his divinity within each and every one of us. You can't get rid of it. It's yours for all eternity. You can dim it. You can ignore it. You can pretend it's not there. But that spark is with you all the time. It's your soul. And one day you will return to God, just like the rest of us. And what is that going to look like? And that's what should shine forth. 
At the end of every Mass, we are sent out into the world to take Christ to the world. We are tabernacles of the Holy Spirit. We are God's presence in the world. Do we allow ourselves to shine forth in that manner? Or do we try to hide it behind some kind of facade? The journey that we're called to is this journey of presenting Christ to the world. We're on a journey of teaching one another, sharing the faith with one another. But to do that, we have to get rid of that stuff. And no, none of us is perfect. That's why we have the sacrament of reconciliation. None of us is always going to get it right. That's why there is forgiveness and mercy. But the challenge is to be authentic, to be real, to really truly be that person that God created you to be. It's kind of fun. I know most of you know that I love sports. But there is nothing more frustrating than the people who jump on and off the bandwagon. They can't decide, are they for the team, are they not for the team? Are they on the team, are they not on the team? Those people drive me crazy. Like, I don't care what team you support, just commit. The same thing is with our faith. Commit to it wholeheartedly. I find there's a lot of Catholics that for some reason are ashamed to admit they're Catholics. They're ashamed to stand up and say, yes, I am a Catholic. And part of that is because they're afraid they're going to get attacked. Well, you know what? Go to Calgary dress in green and go to a Calgary St. Peter's game. <laughs> there are more people who will honor you for being faithful to your team than those who will give you a hard time. Standing up for what you believe in is a powerful statement. When I went to Malaysia to visit my sister the first time, one of the things I found very interesting is it's a Muslim country. They don't exactly like the Jewish people and they don't exactly like the Buddhists and they don't exactly like the Christians. But if you are strong in your faith, they will respect that. If they see you going to church every Sunday, they respect that. If they see you going to the synagogue, they will respect that. If they see you going to the temple, they will respect that. But the ones who call them something and say, I'm a Christian, but don't go to church, they have no respect for that person. Their lack of authenticity. Jesus was transfigured. And Peter and James and John saw the glory of God. But that same glory is in every one of us. God placed it there so that you and I might shine forth for the world to see. That we might be the presence of God in this world. That we may bring Christ to this world. That's our responsibility. But to do that, we need to break down those facades. We need to break down those barriers. We need to break down that image where we go, yeah, but this is how I want the world to see me, instead of this is who I am. St. Paul reminds us, do not get caught up in the material things of this world. For they come and they go. If you do not believe me, and I have told you this before, for those of you who are married, take a look at the picture from your wedding day 
and come and tell me you haven't changed. And I will call you a liar. Because you change. It's part of life. And so the challenge that you have is to be authentic to what you are. God's child. Beloved. Chosen. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I have called you by name and you are mine. We are God's children. Loved unconditionally. Forgiven always. Is that what we present to the world? Is that what we want the world to see about ourselves? And that choice is yours. Who are you really? There's what we show the world. There's what God created. And please, God, they come together. And the, the glory of God shines through everything we do, everything we say, everything we are. One final note. You'll notice I'm celibate. The hiking didn't work. <laughs> let us stand and make our profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed together. So let us tell each other what it is we believe as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident in God's providence, let us praise, place our prayers before him. For Pope Francis, our bishops and priests, may they be guided by the Spirit of God as they lead the faithful to a deeper knowledge of the mystery of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nation and people of Ukraine, that they may experience peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people displaced by war and conflict, that they may receive humanitarian assistance by nations and people of goodwill. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ukrainians in Canada, that they may experience the closeness of God and the support of the faith communities in this time of pain and hardship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all those who care for them, may God grant them healing, relief, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts as we seek to follow God and walk in His ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Maria Weiss, Dennis Motus, and Teresita Akena, may they witness the glory of God in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers, which we offer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Now the mystery of this water and wine we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Be God Wash me, Lord, of my iniquities. Cleanse us of all of our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Our good and good of all this holy church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us from our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory and the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled to the Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. who left us as pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. 
Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, which takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you gather us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I do not believe that you stand on the earth, and on this day of earth, my soul shall be
and none of you should be sitting down right now. So the directive is, once everybody is received, then you get to sit or kneel, adore, praise, give thanksgiving, whatever. But sometimes it's like we've kind of forgotten. And uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to have to relearn some of our Catholic identity as we continue to come out of this pandemic and begin to move back towards something that looks close to normal. And let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of St. Michael together. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you from the humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust in the hell of Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The hospitality would come forward. There are a few announcements. We will have Eucharistic Adoration every Friday in Lent. Sign-up sheets are located in the east entrance, and I notice there are some blank hours in there still. The parish mission continues this Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at Assumption Church. You can either join us in person, or it will be live streamed. It will also be available on the website Thursday morning. If you just click on the place where it says live streaming masses, scroll to the very bottom, and then you'll find um, the latest part two of the parish mission. Next Friday, March 18th, will be a day of prayer for the Ukraine. We invite parishioners to adoration and to include the Ukraine and an end to the war in your prayers. We will conclude adoration at 6 p.m. with prayers for the Ukraine, followed by benediction. After benediction, there will be a soup supper offered um, in the hall. Please bring soup and share. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much. And I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may be always, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel by your life. Thank you, God. Thank you all very much for coming. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.